Hi there. In this video, we'll be upgrading the cell in a Apple Solar Light. I will link the original video inside uh, the description of this one. Uh, in theory, it should have an 18650 cell in it, 2200 million powers. We will be obviously testing to see if that's uh, real or not. As you can see, using the Kai Witz uh, electrical screwdriver, it's working beautifully and makes uh, disassembling stuff like this much, much, much quicker. Uh, so we will test the battery inside of this, see what capacity it has. This thing only lasts for a few hours uh, in the evening. And there probably are two reasons behind that. The capacity of the cell could be way less than it's actually advertised. Could be a, a cheap Chinese no name. We'll see about that in a moment. And also this panel is quite small. Uh, the battery, we can upgrade the panel. It is what it is, but this has a smart feature. It basically has a micro USB plug in here. So we can power this with a power bank, but I don't want to keep charging power banks. So I will charge the power bank with a bigger solar panel and everything will be connected together. This charges by itself during the day. During the night it starts uh, taking uh, power from this USB from the other uh, uh, power bank uh, that was charged by the other solar panel. I know it's a bit complicated, but it will make this thing work full night without any issue. Uh, that will be actually a separate video in itself, which will show you how to charge power banks from uh, uh, solar panels the easiest way and uh, even uh, basically charge when uh, or charge lithium 18650 cells not necessarily power banks to charge them even where there's barely any light outside it will still continue to charge at a really low current because the solar panel is creating really low current but it will still charge and not stop charging at all so yeah that will be a separate video again you can find that one in the description also but for the moment let's see what we have in here i'm quite curious so in theory we have a seal which as you can see the, from the marks uh, was not sealed uh, perfectly in here it was out of place when this was closed so this could have um, gotten water in it at any point in time and by the looks of it uh, wires are silicon so the wires are really nice i i like that everything is uh, sealed in here no water will go through there uh, usb port yeah, it's directly on the board so uh, yeah it can uh, i keep opening the wrong end it could potentially <laughs> get water through here but normally it has a flap i will make sure i seal uh, this thing when i uh, do that modification but yeah overall this thing uh, this thing looks nice i like it it's good but let's see the cell itself, which is extremely easily upgradable. What? Yeah, it's a no, no name. Could could still have this value. So I'm not saying it doesn't, but uh, also could not have it. But is it a protected cell or isn't it a protected cell? And we will see that by the size of it. Nope, absolutely no protection whatsoever on this cell. So what I can do at this point, throw it in the tester and see what value we actually have based on the weight of it. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to probably be close enough to this, but we will still put a 3200 million power uh, cell in it, which this thing might not be able to charge, but maybe during the summer in a full sunny day from morning to evening, it might be able to charge it. And if the next day we have less sun, it will still have a power reserve in the battery. It's still worth to put a, a bigger battery in there, just in case. 
and it's in there with a normal test at 500 milliamp hour charging and 300 milliamp hour discharging. And we'll see at the end what value we have in here in capacity. And this is what I will be putting in. LG MH1 cells. These are really good cells, quite safe cells, probably much safer than the one we took out. This is the tested capacity. This is a secondhand uh, cell. I got them, I think a dollar a piece or something like that. I upgraded a lot of power banks with them. I will link that video also in the description. Uh, I tested that 700 milliamp hour charge and 500 milliamp hour discharge. So if I would have tested at lower charge and discharge, this value would be higher. But uh, I didn't have enough time to let this thing uh, stay on the tester too much. I'm going to remove this uh, right, or actually maybe it's also going to make contact without removing. It's not the ideal type of cell for this. As you can see, it's kind of a level. The other one was the type with um, uh, something at the end, but I'm going to check now if we will still have a contact or not with uh, this cell. And I'm going to also make sure these wires stick to where they need to and will not go into the cell compartment as they were when we opened this because that I do not like at all. Let's see. Will this make a good contact or will it not? And it's not even near. <laughs> uh, I need to find a way to extend this. So be back in a second. This could be a really stupid way to extend this, but I'm still going to try it. So let's spot weld. And I think I, I'm always welding more than it's actually required. Now I'm going to fold this on top of itself and create a few good layers uh, of this until I raise it enough to touch what it needs to. Of course, make sure it's uh, completely squished uh, on itself and uh, spot weld again and again and again. Make sure the battery does not heat up. I hope it will work, but we'll see. And it's done. And uh, there is that saying, it ain't stupid if it works. Some things are stupid even if they work. This is completely stupid, but it is spot welded to the hell and back. So it's not going to come apart from here. If you would actually try to remove this, it, you will end up just with pieces, pieces of it and a bunch of many holes in, uh, in there. So uh, yeah, it's weird, but I made it work. And in theory, at this point, uh, all that we need to do is uh, put this thing in here and we're done. Making contact way more than enough clearance in here. Let me try to give you more light so you can see what's happening in there. There's absolutely no chance in hell this thing is not going to make contact at any point in time. And uh, yeah, so putting a cell that's at least 35% larger if the other one is at full capacity. This I know that it's uh, at uh, almost full or quite full capacity. So uh, at this point, let's close this little thing up. Again, wires really good quality. I like that. What I see inside really good again. What I need to make sure now is that this thing is absolutely in the channel when I close it. I do not want this to uh, again be just partially in the channel and not make a full seal of the unit although again this is sealing the entry to the PCB so yeah but uh, that will be modified by me so I will also have a perfect full seal there and look at this how it was caught in here doesn't even want to really stay in, in there because it seems to be just a tad bit longer than it should be but if, I, if I'm careful when I close it and it's in this position, everywhere in, 
we should have a seal but uh, yeah was it uh, does it matter which is top and which is bottom I think no I think this is uh, completely symmetrical but if I remember correctly this that started to get uh, damaged at the top is the top part so uh, that will remain at, at the top okay now hopefully we'll make a much better seal because previously we really didn't have a seal put the wires in the middle so they cannot go anywhere where we do not want them make sure this is still in there the the rubber seal all around and it's trying to come out look at it here so be really careful about it not coming out because that could uh, cause trouble once again and we do not want that for for sure okay and it's closed and now it cannot come out anymore in high speed i will put uh, all of these little guys in with this nice tool from Kyrie's. Oh, so let me do that. And I found out why this was not closing properly. From the mold there was just a bit of rubber. Uh, closing the gap and I cut that off and now it's actually sealing absolutely perfectly but then I will actually come with my connector in here <laughs> so I need to seal it with uh, something else but uh, yeah it is what it is and now I'm going to install this thing and get back to you if I see any difference I don't know in the first week after installing it or something like that because later I will uh, actually install the big solar panel and the power bank and then for sure all night uh, this will be running but at least in the first week to see maybe one or two days it will still have charge the initial charge from that cell once that will be depleted this is the only thing topping up uh, or charging that cell so uh, I will see how it behaves compared to the other one. And test is finished, so much lower capacity than it should have, quite high internal resistance, so this is not an efficient cell, and we replaced it with one with double capacity. Yes, we will be only using that double capacity if two days in a row we have a lot of sun and the third day there's uh, only clouds maybe it will run a full night for for the third day also but otherwise it might probably not be able to utilize that well the edit capacity but still better it didn't have the advertised capacity at this point in time uh, and i don't like that at all so yeah still good upgrade and it's in place for a few weeks it is performing better but it's not magic that's a small solar panel and if uh, it's cloudy it's not able to properly charge but if there are a few uh, consecutive really sunny days uh, that thing is really uh, benefiting from the bigger capacity battery so and my neighbor's dogs <laughs> so yeah that's about it this is a good upgrade in my opinion and uh, if you have this you should do it so hope this video helps you in which case Please give it a like, check out my other videos, hopefully with less uh, dogs, <laughs> and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.